I'm here hanging out in front of the display display. This is uh, where we display all of the displays that we have in the museum collection. And we've got a pretty cool thing to look at related to all of this stuff. This is a digital counter, the TSA 6635, good name. And although the panel may look slightly unassuming, if I twist this knob, oh, ho, 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 you know what those are, Nixie tubes. So this thing would have sat on your bench uh, as a piece of test equipment for, uh, you know, testing whether different pieces of equipment work or in a scientific lab to conduct experiments and things with. You've got an input here where you plug something into and it counts on the display, the lovely Nixie tube display, how many pulses are coming into it over a period of time. Now, as much as I know you guys love electronic repairs and scientific experiments, I know that you're here for these beautiful uh, glowing Nixie tubes. And we've got a fair few Nixie tubes in the display display over there as well. Got a Nixie tube clock over here. We've got a big old uh, ZIN80 uh, Nixie tube there. Another one spinning around over there. That one's pretty. More little Nixies over there. And even this piece of test equipment here, the Solartron, uh, where we've taken the cards out so you can see them much better. And that's hooked up to uh, this uh, solar panel here. So if I wave my hand in front of this, as the light goes up and down, you can see it changing the numbers. These Nixie tubes, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and configurations. We are lucky enough to have the biggest Nixie tube in production made by Dalibor Farney. Look at that amazing thing. And it really demonstrates uh, the construction of them. You can see there all of the layers of different uh, cathodes in there that uh, make up all the patterns that are the numbers. Here is one in action. Sam's already made a video about this one. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. We already talked a little bit about how valves work. Uh, some people call them tubes. Uh, when uh, we talked about this cavity magnetron. Valves, including Nixie tubes, come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and have all kinds of different uh, functions. But really, what they are is particle accelerators. Yeah, that's right. Just like that gigantic science experiment outside of Geneva, that uh, Large Hadron Collider at CERN, these things are just a miniature version of that. Inside these glass encapsulations, you have two electrodes. You have a cathode, which is negatively charged, and an anode, which is positively charged. And if you have an electron, which are negatively charged, near the cathode, which is also negatively charged, just like magnets repelling, it's not going to want to stay there. It's going to want to get attracted towards the anode and zoom across the gap between them. Now, normally in the air around us, and it's invisible to us, but there's loads of stuff that gets in the way and it bumps into them and never makes the journey. But in a vacuum tube, you guessed it, they suck the air out so that there's nothing in between the two electrodes and those electrons can zoom across. Now you can put stuff in the way to manipulate those electrons moving in different ways for different applications. But in a Nixie tube, they put a little bit of neon gas in the way. And because it's just a little bit, the electron still has a chance to accelerate up to a speed where when it finally smashes into a neon particle, it uh, excites it and it causes it to release light, which is this lovely, beautiful orangey glow. We've got other kinds of tubes as well. They're not technically Nixie tubes, but they also have neon inside, like these beautiful counting tubes, these Decatrons, and this here humble uh, light bulb, but filled with neon. And you can see it kind of pulsating there. And uh, that is because it's being fed directly with AC alternating current from the mains plug. And so the anode and the cathode, as the direction of the current is reversing, are swapping around. And so the direction of travel of those electrons 
is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which uh, the camera is able to see. I can just about see it with my eyes, but my eyes are not quite sensitive enough to see. But with the camera, you can see it flickering, which is kind of cool. You can actually see the alternating current from the mains plug. And all these different types are generally under the umbrella of discharge tubes. And if you use different gases instead of the neon in these discharge tubes, uh, then you are gonna get different colors just because of the different makeups of the particles, the different sizings and energy levels and sciencey stuff. You know it, you know it. So the neon gives a nice orangey glow. If you put sodium in there, uh, it will give you more of a yellow. And then argon will give you a lovely purple. So next time you're walking down the street and you see one of those fancy nice uh, purple signs all made out of all the twisted tubes and stuff uh, and somebody says oh look there's a neon tube uh, light well you can say to them actually my friend I think you'll find there's argon gas in there not neon and then and then you realize that actually you're just talking to yourself because you don't have any friends because you're a nerd very soon on the channel you're gonna be seeing a revamp of this display display it's gonna be even better and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at the museum at the moment. I'll give you a quick little look. This is my favorite thing that I've done lately. Here in the telecoms room, I've made a nice little tool display on the underside of the storage racks. We've actually managed to utilize this little unused space. And I think it looks pretty darn cool. You can actually walk under it and see all of the tools. Whoa! There's also a load of cool stuff that we've never even shown you on the channel. So if you want to see some of this, let us know in the comments. There is also a video coming next week on this incredible Erica Simps Electa Formant system that we spent 24 hours soldering overnight. So subscribe to see that. Right, back to this. Let's have a bit of a closer look, shall we? I just love how as the numbers change, you can see that all of the uh, cathodes, the differently shaped cathodes, are all stacked on top of each other, uh, turning on and off and moving in and out. It's kind of like 3D. Shall we take a look inside? And I hope it goes without saying that you should not take the lids off of things while they're still plugged in. Well, I am a qualified idiot. Aha, uh -huh. that's pretty cool looking. And we can see the lit up Nixie tubes from above uh, connected to their driver cards there. It's very nicely laid out. It's very pretty inside for these little handles for the cards. See all the wires coming off of the switch here. There we are. So very easy to access to maintain. You've just got these uh, edge connectors here go into the uh, slots down there and you just pull them out and you can uh, probe around, repair anything on there that's gone wrong. A closer look at the Nixie tube and uh, the, all the cathodes all stacked up and the wires coming off to the PCB. There are all the traces on the other side. You got to love the old school look of these things, how they were made. A lot of these uh, traces and things is all hand drawn. How you make these is you got a fiberglass board and then uh, you cover it in copper and then you draw on your pattern here, your traces, and then expose it and uh, etch it in acid and eat away the copper that you don't want and it leaves you with all of these traces here effectively you know wires uh, laying flat compact on this board the printed circuit board yeah somebody had to think about all this and work it all out and uh, I think a bit underappreciated this day uh, when you can do all this in the computer and let me tell you you start to appreciate PCBs when you start opening up older electronics like this dictaphone here that's got point-to-point -point wiring uh, so all of the little component legs are all just connected to each other in a big 3d messy maze it's a nightmare especially when you've got valves hot valves right next to wax covered capacitors uh, that melt all over the already messy circuit. Uh, so yeah, PCBs, underappreciated. I've just pulled out this one, which is a load of the timing stuff. Uh, so you can uh, set a time that you are uh, measuring the pulses in between. Uh, and you can see here, this is a crystal oscillator. So it's got 
a crystal in it that vibrates at a calibrated uh, rate and so that's how it derives its uh, clock, its time reference. We have a fair few of these nice old quartz crystal units in amongst our old components uh, displayed as well. So I guess we should actually uh, hook it up and see if it works. Never a guarantee around here. I have brought it over to our modular synth wall and I'm going to plug it into via this little patch cable, the Look Mom No Computer uh, performance uh, VCO oscillator. So we just reset it there. And then if I press start, is it gonna do it? It's doing it. Okay, amazing. And if I change the frequency with the octave here, you can see counted slower, counted faster. Awesome. And we can stop it there. And obviously you can trigger that externally. Uh, via these inputs. We've got different things that we can display with the Nixie tubes here. We're on count at the moment, which is counting the pulses that are coming in uh, the A input. And uh, we've also got the timing, so we can view uh, the time elapse in between the start and stop uh, here. This uh, B and C, you can see B and C. And then you've got A to A, uh, the timing uh, of in between the pulses coming in here. And then uh, we've also got multi-period, which I don't really know what it is. You tell me if you know, but I'm guessing it relates to these uh, blue markings around here because this is also in blue. And frequency, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. And you can see here when I change the time division here, the little neon indicator of the decimal point shifts across. Nifty got quite a wide range here you go all the way up to megahertz and the sensitivity can be set as low as 75 millivolts up to 250 volts so pretty versatile piece of equipment look at this it's counting so quick uh, the, uh, all the displays are just blurred. So I hope you enjoyed that look at an uh, interesting piece of uh, test equipment and some uh, display technology from the past before they had screens like you're watching this on. They had to figure out how to display numbers somehow and they thought particle accelerators where we're smashing high voltage electrons into neon gas. That sounds sensible. Let us know if there's a particular thing you want us to cover in the video or just some of the behind the scenes of making uh, all of the displays in the museum and museum-y things. We're pretty lucky that we get to play museum all day. I know that if I go to a museum now, sometimes I'm more excited about the display cases than the actual things in them. If you like what we do here at the museum, bringing all the videos to you and stuff, you can support us on Patreon and if you're a Patreon member you get loads of perks and extra videos and stuff and even access to all of the sample packs that we make of all the crazy sounds and stuff around here that you can chop up and make into your music but if you don't want to be a Patreon member you can go to the website which is worth checking out anyway uh, and download those sample packs there and of course you can come and visit us yourself uh, here in Ramsgate, which is a short hop on the train down from London. Uh, and it's a nice seaside resort as well this time of year. Um, and you can visit the merch shop here and support us that way. And I'll tell you, those Nixie Tube displays, they just look so much better in person. You just can't capture it uh, with a camera. There's loads of stuff going on here at the museum to show you. We just moved to this exchange around here, so now we've got loads of space just around the corner for some extra fun stuff. And the telecoms displays over here are all coming along, including moving this uh, mimic panel from a nuclear power station in here. So we're going to get all that lit up and working uh, soon as well. So lots to show you. So make sure you're subscribed and we will catch you in the next video.